Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, I'm Amy and I make videos on absolutely everything coloured pencil related. In today's video, I'm going to talk through some of the steps and techniques I use to create this crocodile eye. This is so different from my usual subjects and it uses a few different techniques so this will be good for those of you wanting to try out new things and develop your coloured pencil skills a little bit further. Let's get straight into it. I started this drawing by mapping in most of my dark areas around the eye. I used my reference photo really closely and I added in the really dark areas so those super sharp shadows. Quick tip for if you're struggling with identifying the shadows and they're muddying with those mid-tones, squint at your reference image and everything will become a whole lot clearer, trust me. For adding in these darker areas I used a really light hand at first and as there's no fur direction or any real directional texture I added this in little tiny circles and a back and forth shading motion covering as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. My aim here is to build up as many different directional layers as possible working in those circles and that back and forth lines to build a slick smooth surface which replicates the texture of the skin and in the eye itself. At this point I also start to add in any dark detail lines I can see in the eye itself and I shade around the highlighted areas within the eye, also adding in any defining details or lines into and around that area. Once I've finished with the eye itself I then start to depict any dark crevices and areas of the surrounding skin. I use the same technique and gently shade larger patches and use the point of my pencil for finer, precise lines. With the main dark values added in, it's then time to start having fun with the colours within the crocodile's iris. I started off with the lightest values, adding down a layer of warm grey one, which is my absolute favourite. For this layer I used broad circular motions to start with and then developed into smaller circles to smooth out the layer some more. I then used a brown ochre 10% and I applied this in exactly the same way. Building towards my darker tones I began to add the subsequent colours in the darkest areas of the iris which was mainly around the outer edges. This tends to be the case with most eyes, you'll notice dark shadows around the outer edge and around the highlighted areas and it's really important to replicate this within your drawing so you get a spherical look and feel. I used some earth green, some green gold, olive green yellowish and chromium green opaque to slowly build the darker more saturated values and tones within the eye, all the time using that light pressure, circular motions and slowly building the depth. I preserve the lighter areas around the pupil and I add light layers of the more yellow colours to indicate that this is where a majority of the light is reflected. I blend my darker colours from the outer edge inwards, gradually lifting the pressure from my pencil so I get a really nice smooth graduated colour. The texture within the eye is built using my darker tones, some walnut brown and some dark sepia, and creating small directional lines coming from the pupil towards the outer edges. The lines here were a little bit more jagged than other eyes so I made sure that I crisscrossed lines, I added zigzags and almost exaggerating the texture a little bit. With that complete I then added in the final part of the eye, that highlight and this is where the magic happens for me and highlights are one of my favourite parts to draw, it really brings the eye to life. I used really light layers of earth green, sky blue and delft blue, gently adding them into the darker areas of the highlight whilst also using my darker tones to build in some details. In this reference you can see a glass roof reflected along with a few fronds of foliage so I made sure that I used a super sharp pencil to add in all of those tiny precise lines. For the really dark parts of the eye, I actually went in and used a completely different technique and I will actually be covering that in next week's video so make sure that you hit that sub button if you want to know how I've created the contrast within this eye and a few of my other drawings. So now let's tackle that skin. 
This isn't too much of a daunting task when you really get stuck into it and it's actually a really simple technique to master to get that texture, to get that sort of three dimensional look of all of those individual bumps and everything on the skin. I like to work in small sections when rendering this type of texture so that I don't overwhelm myself and get confused or lost. Believe me, this is easy for me to do, I'm extremely easily confused. I start off with that base colour and layer of warm grey one and I add this down using light pressure and not really adding it down in any particular direction so like I did within the eye. I'm using that combination of circular motions and shading back and forth to try and build that smoothness from the get go. I then start to add in all of the tones and colours which I can see within the reference photo, making sure that I build again from those lightest colours to the darkest and paying attention to where they needed to be added according to the reference photo. I used layers of earth green, raw umber 50%, sky blue, all of those greeny blue tones and then I blended over with the white pencil from the Caran d'Ache Luminance to smooth everything out and build that really nice smooth texture of the skin. Once they were in place, I then went over with my dark tones and I started to depict some of the dark crevices and the darker patches of the skin slowly building the tone by using that light pressure and remembering to keep using circular motions to create that smooth texture. Where there are bumpy, lumpy bits on the crocodile, I add down my dark lines using that dark sepia or a walnut brown and then I use that dark tone to shade and blend around those lines and gradually lift my pencil, colouring towards the lighter areas to create a smooth, graduated blend of colour like I did within the eyes where we blended from the outer edges into the lighter area in the middle and this helps to create that three dimensional effect. You can really see this in effect on the lip underneath the eye. You've got that really dark crevice on the very bottom and then you've got a lighter area through the middle and then you've got a darker area again leading towards the eyeball on the top. And I shaded from the dark on the bottom into the light in the middle, lifting the pressure from my dark toned pencil as I'm going. And then I've done exactly the same thing on the top from the eyeball into the highlighted area in the middle. And doing that helps to create a really bright highlighted area in the center, as you can see. And that shading and that technique is what gives this area and all of the other tiny lumps and bumps their form. I've applied the same technique of identifying the lights and darks using that squinting method and also using the method of turning the reference photo black and white which I will link as a card up above for you guys and then using that graduating shading technique over the entire thing and I formed each little scale in this way. It's an incredibly slow process but one that is so worth it when you see the final result. Once the shading is complete, I then blend out with the white pencil in any areas that need smoothing and I also glaze over some of my mid-tones to bring back the colour saturation of the skin which may have been lost when getting those values correct for building the form of the skin. I layer down a few more greens, blues and even a little bit of red here and there to give the skin enough life. The final touches on this study are made using a white gel pen for any highlights and also that super secret technique which will be revealed next week. Have you hit that sub button yet so you don't miss it? And that's pretty much it for today's video. If you want to follow along with this in real time as I'm doing it step by step then this is now available for my $10 patrons over on Patreon and to my website subscribers. I'll leave the links to both in the description below if you fancy checking either of those out. I really hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed watching a much different texture come to life compared to what I usually upload. I find it absolutely fascinating and mesmerising to work on these kinds of textures. If you like this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up with that button below and if you're new around here and you thought this video was extra super duper then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Maybe even tick that bell icon too while you're at it. I upload new videos every single Friday and I live stream most Sundays too which is always a hoot and great if you want to watch some live drawing and get involved with the growing community here. We'd love to have you. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.